But here's a few examples of why holism is so important. So imagine, for example, that there's something wrong in the body, like with your heart. And, uh, and let's say I'm the CEO of this corporation. It's a pharmaceutical company, and I want to help people to, uh, to heal their heart. But in fact, more likely, it's like uh, I want to actually earn a lot of money. <laughs> that would probably be my first priority uh, if we're realistic about how CEOs run these companies, which is an unholistic way of thinking in and of itself. But let's just focus on, on healing the heart. So let's say that we want to create a drug that reduces cholesterol and plaque in the heart. Uh, okay, great. So we think that, you know, I tell my scientists, hey, focus on finding me the right chemical that we can manufacture and patent to reduce cholesterol. Go find it. That's your number one priority. That's all we care about. Just focus on that. And some scientist says, well, but what about, what about other effects of this drug? I say, no, it doesn't matter. We just need this drug by next quarter to, you know, drive up our stock prices. That's what we need. Uh, damn everything else. Focus all your energy on just finding this chemical. And so the scientists go, they obey because under capitalism, they have to, to uh, you know, not to starve. So they, they obey the CEO and they, they do this and they find the drug that will do it, this one chemical. And that they test it and it seems to work in these double blind placebo controlled studies, works, uh, cures people's heart disease and so forth. Great, right? Except what if this chemical creates cancer in the kidneys or in the liver. See, in order to catch that, you'd have to think more holistically. You'd have to think of this chemical not only affecting or curing one part of the body, but also you know, it, not only does it have to cure the heart problem, it has to also not cause other problems in the body. And there are thousands of other problems it could potentially cause, and it would be difficult to study all those problems and to eliminate them as side effects. Sometimes the drug can have worse side effects than the disease that it's curing. But that's not all. See, you might say, well, okay, fine. If the CEO is a little bit more holistic in his understanding, he's a little bit smarter. He has to, he has to tell his scientists, don't just look for a drug that heals the heart, but also doesn't damage any of the other parts of the physical body. Well, that's better. That's certainly a, a better approach. Uh, and, and through that method, we might find some new chemical, which both heals the heart and doesn't cause cancer or other diseases anywhere else in the body. Okay, good. But, but notice how limited this still is. Because see, when you're manufacturing a drug, it's not just about the physical body, it's also about the mind. And if you have a very materialistic approach, a very reductionistic approach to, to human health, you might think, well, damn the mind. I'm not in the, you know, as a CEO, I'm not in the business of healing people's minds. I don't care about their minds. I care about their bodies. That's my business. Everything else that, you know, that's for psychologists to think about the mind. That's for their guru to worry about. That, that's not my job. Okay, but then what if this drug that was invented, it doesn't harm any of the body, but when you take it, you get depression after a few months. And then this depression becomes very bad. And maybe even this drug has some addictive qualities such that even after it's cured your heart disease, you still keep taking it. And then this leads people to commit suicide from this depression. Now, the CEO might compartmentalize this and say, well, that's, again, that's not, that's not my concern. That's not my business. Let him go to a therapist and work out his depression. Uh, but, but what if the chemical is actually causing the depression? And also there's addiction there. See, If you're thinking it's not holistic, you can compartmentalize that problem and you can ignore it and you can deny it. And you can make a lot of money selling this drug. But if you have a more holistic approach, you might say, oh, damn, I mean, we could have earned $10 billion selling this drug, but we can't. We have to, we have to look for something else because this drug causes depression in people. And I care about that because I'm a more holistic sort of leader and CEO. How many CEOs would, would make that difficult decision? Not very many. Not these days. Not to say they couldn't, but they just... As part of their culture, they wouldn't because their responsibility is more for driving up stock prices than it is for caring about people's psychological well-being. But it doesn't stop there. It's also about how we market this drug. Even if this drug is, 
is is fine and doesn't cause depression and so forth, the way we market it very aggressively, how we price the drug, pricing out people who don't have the money for it, for example, or marketing it so aggressively that people who don't need the drug end up taking the drug and it causes bad effects in them. So it might heal those people who are actually sick, but then it causes more disease and problems in those who aren't sick, but we push the drug so hard through television ads and various kinds of free giveaways that they do through doctors and so forth um, that we create harm that way. And then there are all sorts of secondary and tertiary cascading effects from that, you see. It's gonna affect your country, your citizens, your neighbors, your community that you live in. Such that maybe you sell this drug to somebody who doesn't need it, they get addicted to it, they get depressed from it, then they go buy a AR-15, then they go shoot up a school, and it turns out that that school is where your daughter was going. And she gets shot. And see, now you can fully appreciate how everything in the universe is deeply interconnected and that you can't just treat it as though it's not your problem. In a sense, everything is your problem. And so part of what it means to be a holistic thinker is that requires taking much more responsibility for all of your actions and all of the secondary and tertiary consequences. But the way that many leaders and business people operate these days is very much unlike that because it doesn't serve them. It doesn't serve their survival. It doesn't serve their pocketbook to be this holistic because then you have to take a lot of responsibility for your actions of your business. You see? So this is just one example of how deeply problematic this sort of uh, lack of holism can be. And also it shows you why there is a sort of a perverse incentive for people to be deliberately unholistic in their thinking.